Hi everyone students and welcome back. In this video we shall study about the remaining practices of crop production namely insecticide sprinkling, harvesting of crops and storage of food grains. We will also study about the protection of crops from wild birds and stray animals as part of our extra knowledge. All right? We begin with sprinkling of insecticides. We will see the difference between insecticides and pesticides later. You know students, farmers have to protect their crops from a variety of insects and pests such as locusts, beetles, termites, larvae of insects and rodents such as rats. They are collectively termed as pests. They damage or eat the crops for their survival. Therefore, the farmers have to fight against them for their own survival. Let me show you some of the images of insects and pests so that our learning becomes lively, alright? There are a variety of beetles that damage the crops of paddy and wheat as you see here. Do you see these colorful small beetles? They suck the sap from tender paddy and wheat. We have here another bunch of beetles. They damage the leaves and fruits of vegetables. Do you see? Here is a family of ladybird beetles enjoying their lunch. And locusts too are the enemies of the farmers. They look graciously beautiful, but they are unappeasable eaters of crops. Then there are a wide range of larvae of insects damaging the crops. They wriggle around every part of crop plant and devour the entire plant. Larvae are voracious eaters of leaves of crops. Last but not the least, the farmers also have to face rodent menace. The rodents damage the crops in the fields and also invade the grains in the granaries. Let's take a look how the farmers deal with these problems. Crops are damaged by insects and pests. The damaged crops yield less grains. Crops are protected by spraying pesticides. Now, what are pesticides? Pesticides are chemical substances used for destroying pests. These are poisonous chemicals which can kill insects and pests. The pesticides are of two types, insecticides and rodenticides. The insecticides are used for killing insects, examples malathion, polythion, and BHC. The full form is benzene hexachloride, commonly known as gamexin. Even DDT is quite effective. The rodenticides are used for killing rodents, example, warfin and zinc phosphate. By the way, what are the advantages of using pesticides? It's often asked in the exam as a short question. There are only three main advantages. First one, the pesticides destroy the pests quickly. Number two, the healthy crops increase the food production. Number three, pesticides are easy to store and use them. What about the disadvantages of using pesticides? There are five major disadvantages of using pesticides. They affect the other wildlife of the area. The continuous usage of pesticides leads to pest resistance. The excess usage of pesticides increases soil acidity. They cause water pollution. They may enter the food chains and cause skin and respiratory infections. The war for protection of crops is not yet over. The crops are also attacked by bacteria, viruses and fungi as well. You will study about these microorganisms in the next chapter. These microbes cause diseases such as bacterial diseases, viral diseases and fungal diseases in crop plants. Generally, the farmers spray fungicides on the crops to fight against fungal diseases, whereas antibiotics are sprayed on the crops to fight against bacterial diseases. But fungicides and antibiotics do not work against viral diseases. Hence, prevention of spread is the best protection method for crops. Let me show you some of the images for easy understanding and remembrance. It is good for you to remember some of the examples for the sake of exams, alright? Okay, here we go. Let's see two examples of bacterial diseases in tomatoes. The first one, the leaf spot disease. Do you see the yellowish spots of leaves on a tomato plant? 
and the second one is wilt disease also in tomato plant see the withered leaves and unhealthy fruits bacteria damage the crop yield and also plants produce unhealthy crops let's look at two examples of viral diseases in bendy that is okra and beans caused by viruses the first one is yellow vein mosaic disease in bendy see the veins of the leaves they have turned yellow the second one is golden vein mosaic disease in beans in this case the veins of the leaves turn into golden yellow is it to remember these two diseases ybm virus and gbm virus that is yellow vein mosaic and golden vein mosaic diseases caused by viruses how about fungal diseases okay i have got for you two examples of fungal diseases in wheat and paddy this is wheat rust disease in wheat crop and this is paddy blast disease in paddy crop let me give you two more examples rice smut in paddy and potato blight in potatoes these diseases too are caused by fungi the war for protection of crops is not yet over the farmers have to protect their crops against wild birds and stray animals as well wild birds destroy maturing crops like maize and millet they can be scared away from the fields by beating a drum or with the help of a scarecrow as you see it here how about the stray animals such as wild boar stray cows bulls and buffaloes crops are protected from stray animals by putting up a fence around the field i guess we are ready to move on to the next topic that is harvesting of crops shall we all right by the way what is meant by harvesting the process of cutting and gathering of matured crops is termed as harvesting the crops are harvested either manually using a sickle or by a machine called a harvester the harvester is also called a combine harvesting of crops actually involve three main important steps the first one harvesting itself that is cutting and gathering of crops number 2 threshing that is separation of grains from harvested crops and number 3 we know when that is separation of grains from hay and chaff let us see one by one let's talk about harvesting as i told you harvesting is the process of cutting and gathering of matured crops now harvesting is done by two ways the first way is by using a sickle a sickle is a small iron tool with sharp teeth just look at it using a sickle the harvesting is done manually it takes a lot of time but it is cost effective look at these farmers harvesting with sickles second way is by using a harvester or combine a harvester is a combined machine hence also called combine have a look at the image of a harvester harvesting with this machine saves a lot of time but it's very expensive in fact it is a 3 in 1 machine for harvesting threshing and winnowing let's talk about threshing now that is separation of grains from harvested crops what is threshing the process of separating grains from the harvested crops is called threshing usually threshing is done for cereal crops and pulse crops examples paddy wheat pigeon peas that is arrer etc it is done by striking the crops against a hard surface look at these images this is the hard surface upon which the farmers are striking the crop some farmers even use a thresher machine look at here it is just a simple machine the third point winnowing that is separation of grains from hay and chaff let's define winnowing the process of separating grains from chaff and hay with the help of wind is called winnowing it is done manually or using a winnowing fan look at these images here the farmers are winnowing manually whereas here the farmers are using a winnowing fan let's talk about harvest festivals now remember some of them for the sake of exams the farmers are overjoyed seeing their bounty crops waving to them to be harvested they are elated and thank the almighty in the form of harvest festivals 
The following are the harvest festivals celebrated in different states of India. Pongal in Tamil Nadu, Bihu in Assam, Baisakhi in Punjab, Onam in Kerala, Ugari in Andhra Pradesh, Sohrai in Jharkhand, and Nabanya in West Bengal. After looking at these colorful festivals, let us move on to the next topic that is storage of food grains. After harvesting, the food grains are dried in the sunshine to reduce moisture content. It is necessary because the higher moisture content promotes the growth of fungus and mold on the food grains. Farmers store the food grains in metal drums or jute bags also called as gunny bags. Dried neem leaves are added in the drums and the gunny bags to protect grains from pests, insects and microbes. The gunny bags are stored in the granaries. See the image of the granary here. While the wealthy farmers store the grains in grain silos. Grain silos are nothing but large metal drums used for bulk storage. That's all folks. Hope you enjoyed learning with me. If yes, let me know about it.